Hello learners in laparoscopic surgery and friends. I am Dr. T. Varun Raju demonstrating the techni technique of uh, TAPP for left inguinal hernia. Uh, here you can see the indirect sac which is lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels with some non-specific additions to the sigmoid colon. The secondary ports are placed on each side of the edge of the rectus sheath, midclavicular level, right and left side. Now, a curvilinear incision is given starting from the anterior superior iliac spine on the peritoneum and which is uh, uh, made up to the level of uh, left medial umbilical ligament. The next step is the lateral compartment dissection or the space of bogros. All the areolar tissue is teased either with uh, uh, Maryland's dissector or the scissors. Just you push the tissue above or hold the peritoneum and drag it down and the space is going to be created. It is started at the level of anterior superior iliac spine internally above and down posteriorly over the psoas muscle. Sometimes it may be a difficult task especially if it is if it contains a large amount of adipose tissues or with previous surgeries. See now the space is nicely created. Just push the uh, adipose tissue that is more than sufficient. The carbon dioxide gas itself is a good dissector. It is not mandatory to demonstrate all the, all the lateral vessels, uh, lateral nerves. But the space should be adequate to accommodate the mesh without folding. Now you can see the indirect sac which is going to be pulled down which is inverted. So this was a case of a reducible inguinal hernia. Here it is also noticed that there is a direct inguinal hernia. So this comes with the name of pantaloon hernia. With gentle pulling down manure of the direct sac, you can see the pseudo sac which is there in the superior part of the picture and that is going to be released out. So the hernial sac is separated from the pseudo sac. This is called as hand over hand fashion. Holding the sac and pushing the pseudo sac away from the hernial sac. Now it is completely released. The medial compartment dissection aimed to enter the retropubic space of Regius, identifying the Cooper's ligament 
blunt dissection is sufficient since the areolar tissue is loose and the peritoneum is not adherent to the rectus muscle. Here we should know about the circle of death or corona mortis. It is very important to prevent the injury to these vessels. If any of these vessels are torn, both ends of the vessels can bleed profusely. Now the space dissection is complete medially. Now the dissection of the sac is performed in hand over hand fashion until it is completely pulled out of the inguinal canal. End of uh, the spermatic cord that the sac no longer retract back when this is released. Zodiacious use of monopolar elect electrical uh, diathermy is accepted with direct vision of the structures and uh, teasing it down and separating the areolar tissue and the fat tissue from the herniol sac. In this case, it is seen that there is a small indirect sac which is easily mobilized from the cord structures and reduced back into the peritoneal cavity. You can identify, you can see, you can watch it. It is better you push the structures by a judicious pulling of the peritoneal edge and separating the tissues with the dissector and if needed using the electrocautery and cutting it will help to tease out the peritoneum from the cord structures. Finally, the heritoneal, uh, the hernial sac The hernial sac should be separated completely. From the cord structures. Lift the tissue. And with a sharp dissection. Or with teasing the tissue. By using the electrocautery monopolar by opening the blade of the scissors this dissection can be completed with this particular technique 
you can appreciate the hernial sac there the edge of the hernial sac at the base of this picture so this is the procedure which is known as the parietalization once the parietalization is completed then you can see the gonadal vessels are the procedure parietalization now the 3d polypropylene mesh is used for this case 13.5 cm into 8.5 cm the mesh is a pre shaped one and it is incorporated medial side of the space now the peritoneal fold uh, is sutured i am not fixing the 3d mesh since 3 years intra abdominal pressure will act uniformly over the mesh and keeps it uh, securely in place thus prevents its migration in a fixed space it has an advantage of preventing damage to nervous and vascular structures by staplers and tackers the final step in tapp is the peritoneal closure the goal is to cover the mesh in and uh, in doing intracorporeal suturing the advantage of this suture is it is a self locking so that it will maintain the adequate tension on the suture line intracorporeal suturing is always superior than closing the peritoneum by tackers staplers or clips because it avoids the herniation of bowels through the gaps and uh, which may leads to uh, obstruction we can also use proline or vicryl to suture the peritoneum intracorporeally i prefer vlock because it has got self locking system if there is some tightness at the suture line or inadequate peritoneal flaps in some cases so it is better to dissect the peritoneal edge around 3 to 5 cm below the vessels 
uh, or sometimes the upper flap of the peritoneum can be pulled down so that uh, we can suture it uh, without, any, without any tensions on the suture line. There is no need to put a knot with the V-lock. This, this is the final bite. And I locked it. And that is cut. And finally, the needles and the secondary ports are removed under vision and the pneumoperitoneum let out and the ports are closed. Thanks for watching. Please like it, share it and comment on this subject. Thank you.